Our last topic on dot products is the uh, topic of work, which again is, is something that comes from physics. Um, so the, the basic, most basic concept of work um, that you might see in like a, like a grade 10 or a grade 11 physics class is you have a, an object, let's say, sitting on the ground and you apply a horizontal force and you, you move that object over some distance d so it ends up at a new position and the formula for work is just force times distance. Okay, all right, fair enough. Now, that, that's a case where you're looking at sort of scalar quantities, right? Um, we aren't really worrying about direction here, we're just kind of associating everything with, you know, where the force is applied in the direction of motion. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Um, here's an example um, where we're applying a force to a box to move it up a ramp, and we want to know the work done by the force, and the, I mean, as it's drawn, I guess that force looks like it's kind of in the direction of the ramp, but um, that, that's an artifact of maybe my, my drawing skills more than anything. Let's see, you know, we could redraw this to make it look a little bit more, let's say, exaggerated. Maybe it's like, like that. Although that doesn't look like a 30 degree angle anymore, but we'll, we'll live with it. All right, so now I guess there, there's, there's a couple of ways you could do it. So one thing we could do is we could we could take the sort of the side of the ramp that we're sliding along, the hypotenuse of this triangle, and we could resolve that into some vector, say d, and and then we could take this vector f and we could decompose it into components: one part that's in the direction of d and one part that's orthogonal. And, and then it's really only the, the part that's in the direction of D that we are interested in, right? So we're, we're essentially doing this orthogonal decomposition. We're finding the, the parallel and, and perpendicular components of that force with respect to the direction of motion. And this is a pretty common construct that you run into in physics. Um, okay. Um, so then you can, you know, that, that sort of allows you to sort of tilt the whole picture around. And then what you have in that scenario is that the, the force, well, the force in this case, thing is sort of like the scalar quantity, it is going to be the magnitude of this projection of the vector quantity onto the sort of vector displacement. Okay. All right. <clears throat> but we, we know what this is. Right? It's the magnitude of... Um, f dot d over the magnitude of d uh, squared times d and well that works out to simply you know that this is a scalar quantity now f dot d might be negative so we need the absolute value on top f dot d right we pull out the magnitude of d squared from the bottom and then we're left with magnitude of d. We take the magnitude of that vector. So magnitude of d over magnitude d squared is just magnitude of d. And, and then, of course, the, the distance traveled is just the magnitude of the displacement vector. And so what we get then is that the work in this sort of more general scenario would be the magnitude of that or the absolute value of the of the dot product okay. um, but then you know you think about this a little bit and you realize well you know what the um, the absolute value there is is not really necessary and in fact it's sort of not really desirable um, you do want to allow um, for this possibility that when you're looking at work, um, you might be looking at work done by a force, you might be looking at work done against a force, um, and so there may be times where you do actually want that 
quantity to come out to be negative. And so you drop the absolute value and, and we actually just sort of um, define work as sort of more generally as this dot product, f dot d, okay? All right, um, now that's not the end of the story for work um, in the, uh, as, as we move on um, in later chapters. Uh, in fact, towards the very end, once we're looking at vector calculus, uh, we will see that you can even go a little bit further with generalizing the concept of work to scenarios where the path is not a straight line path, but some sort of you know, curved path through space. Um, the force is not necessarily a constant force. It might be a variable force that might change from point to point in, in space. So the force and the direction might change as you, as you move the object. Um, and you can still compute work in that case, but it's going to have to be done through some sort of, you know, integral, right? Um, okay, so with all that in mind, we come to a problem like, uh, like this one here. And what's kind of cool about this is that to, to calculate the, the work done by the force, well, um, all we really need to do is figure out what these two vectors are, f and d, right? And so what can we, what can we say about f? Well, um, f is a vector, so it's a force of magnitude, the magnitude is 50, right? And we are given the angle of the force with respect to the horizontal, and we know that we can now do this, right? Cos 30 degrees, uh, sine 30 degrees. We know that this vector here will give me a unit vector that makes that angle of 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal, okay? Um, and so the force is going to be 50 times root three over two and one half. So we can write that if we want as uh, 20, oops, 25 root three and 25. And the, the displacement vector, well, we go over 15 and we go up three. So that's simple enough, that's just 15, three. And the work then, the work is just the dot product, right? So the work, will just be f dot d. So it's going to be 25 root 3 times 15 plus 25 times 3. Um, and I guess we could simplify that if we, if we wanted to. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's 75 times one plus five root three. I don't know if that's any simpler. Uh, if you want a decimal value, you can punch it into the calculator. 